Greetings. Welcome to the Young Style Long Form class. I'm Michael Gilman. Um, this week we have a, this lesson. We have a very interesting couple of movements that we're going to do. Um, stork spreads its wings and left brush knee. Now these are going to be the first times that we meet these movements, but they're going to be repeated often throughout the form. So I think you should enjoy these movements. And um, so let us uh, go. Let's start by turning the waist. Keep your feet shoulder width, knees soft, pelvis relaxed. Moving from the center, letting the arms just relax. I remind you, don't just move the arms. Move the torso and the arms follow. That way the arms can relax. You can be opening the joints of the upper body. And it's really important to, to keep the knees soft. If the knees are locked, it's going to be very difficult to feel comfortable doing this movement. Then rolling down. and up. Good. Shake. Shake out the hands and arms. Loose and free, loose and free. Nice and light. Shoulders. Good. Shake out the legs. Remember that the, this comes from the hip joint. It's not just trying, just moving the ankle or just the knee. It's, it's from the hip joint and all the muscles. We want the muscles to relax and let go. Good. Opening up by slightly kicking away. Other leg, shake. Now, at home, when you do these shaking movements, you might want to take and probably would take quite a bit more time to do this than we're doing it right here, right now. You see, I might just sort of like start shaking, you know, the thumb and see if I can identify and let go just the thumb. And then, you know, maybe just the index finger, concentrate on that and the, the middle finger, you know, and then just the fingers and then just the hand and then just the wrist. Taking the time to, to do these so that all of these, um, all of your muscles and all the joints open. But since we don't, we're all limited to the amount of time we have, I just sort of breeze through it. But it's, it's very, very important, all right? So turn the waist. Now it depends upon, I'd say most people want to do Tai Chi for relaxation. Most people want to do Tai Chi for relaxation purposes. So, and all the warm-ups and the qigong exercises that we go through, this is very, very important to do. Don't just do the movements. When you've finished the form and you've got a lot of, a lot of information and, and, and the form takes quite a bit of time, then you can just, you can focus more on the form. But right now, do a lot of these warm-ups. Work on your stances. You know, work on the stances, work on your warm-ups, and you'll, you'll find a lot of benefit. Okay, Wu Chi stance. <clears throat> feet shoulder width, insides of the feet parallel, knees soft, pelvis slightly tucked under, top of the head lifting with the chin slightly tucked under. Shoulders and upper ribs suspended from above, arms hanging to the sides of the body. If you find that your arms are hanging to the front, you maybe need to put a little tone into the uh, scapula, into the back shoulder blades to, to allow the arms to hang down to the sides. Focus on breathing in and out through the nose and focusing the breath into the lower belly. Take an integration breath. Open. 
Inviting down the Yang Chi, Cosmic Chi. Open yourself up. Feel this energy, sort of like light coming down through the body. You can, as you look inside, you might see the body getting lighter as this energy moves down. Yeah. Down the legs and right out through the toes and the bottom of the feet. Putting yourself in tune with the cosmic energy. Alrighty. I think for a warm up, what we'll do today is some robins uh, to, because the, the movements that we, I've talked about the qua, the qua, and how important the qua is. The, the qua is this hip area, what we call the inguinal fold, the hips, the upper leg, the, um, all of the deep muscles in this area. And this is where we gather energy. To, if we wanted to jump, we would gather energy in here. And all the movements, all the strength of Tai Chi, it comes up from the legs to this particular area. And it's sort of gathered in this area. Then it comes from there, and it comes transferred very quickly to the waist and out through the torso and rest of the body. So this area is, is just utmost important. You know, and this really makes one's movement strong. So we're sitting back on the right foot. Left toe just touches down, sitting. Knee flexible. And we're going to bob up and down here. We're going to work on the uh, flexibility of the leg and all of these connective tissues here. And there's no weight, really, there's no weight on this forward foot. It's just touching down for balance and stability. And you don't want to go all the way up, you know, and very far down. Now, there's a nice, comfortable place. It's sort of like riding a horse or something like that. And um, you'll start to feel your muscles working, and that's good. And you can work up to doing as many of these as you feel comfortable. You want to keep the back straight. Don't bend forward, right? Don't bend back. You can't do it bending back, but don't bend forward. So you do, say, 50 or so. Then come up and shake out. You always want to make sure that after you've done some pretty vigorous, vigorous movements to shake it out to disperse any of the lactic acid that tends to build up around heavy exercise. OK, so we do the left foot. I'm sitting on my left foot, touching the right toe, and up and down. And you'll see today the value of this exercise in the movements that we're going to do, how important this, this is, this area is. It's, it's so important. Yeah. In fact, I was just reading an article about um, Tiger Woods and uh, Ken Griffey Jr., two great people in their sports, and, and showing how they both use swinging motions and how these two swinging motions, the baseball and the golf swing, are very similar and how the power is transmitted through the body. And I was thinking, you know, it's just like Tai Chi. It's the same. We could have a Tai Chi person in that article, too. So when you're doing this, you want to feel the energy going directly into the center of the foot. You don't want to feel just on the toe or into the heel, but into the center of the foot. Good. And shake out. <clears throat> OK, that's what, what I call robins. And it's a very good, very, very good exercise to do for this area. OK, so let's um, review up through raise hands, and then we'll add in then we'll add in our next couple of movements. So let's start out at the beginning, and I think I'll start off facing forward, and then we will <clears throat> view it from the back. Okay, so here we go from commencement. Standing in Wu Chi stance. 
First, focusing the breath on the lower belly. And when you feel ready, start with an inhale for commencement of Tai Chi Chuan. Ward off left. Right, push upward. Roll back. Press forward. And push. Single whip. Raise hands. Okay, let's do it from the back. Make sure to start with the hands to the sides. Then the, the hands sort of roll around a bit as your back opens. Commencement of Tai Chi Chuan. Inhale. Then let the breath just be normal. Ward off left. Right push upward. Roll back. Press forward. And push. Single whip. Raise hands. All right. Uh, one more time. This time, let's kind of just break it up. Make sure you're you that you're got everything happening together. You know, it's like Taiji. It has, it's composed, each movement is composed of a lot of different little parts. And each step has to come together right at the right time. And the end of each movement has to come together right at a specific and perfect moment. You don't want one piece arriving before the end. For instance, in Ward Off Left, what I mean is, for instance, you don't want to come forward and then have the hands arrive. Or you don't want the hands to come up and then the body arrive. It's very important that the hands and body move together so that everything arrives at the proper time. So let's make sure that we're doing that as we do each one of these movements. <clears throat> Commencement. Wrists rise. Keep the shoulders down. Hands straighten as the elbows drop. Palms push down, body lowers. Keep the knees in the direction of the toes. Don't let the knees collapse. Keep the back straight, head up. Ward off, one, open. As you shift, the leg opens, the hand comes up. That's one. All those things you don't want to, one, two, three. It wants to be one. Then over, bring the weight over. The hand comes over. And the step happens just 
as these hands arrive at this particular spot. One, two, and three, coming forward, knee covers the toe, knee goes in the direction of the toe, hand arrives, hands arrive in their proper spot. One, the left hand turns over, right hand relaxes, heel touches down. We're going from straight direction to the right. One. Then two, everything moves together and arrives facing. The back toe turns in, hands all arrive together. Roll back, there's a little transition as you sink into the front claw, then roll back. That's pretty simple. Press. So again, you don't want to turn and go forward. You don't want to go forward and turn. You want to turn and move forward. And just as the knee hit covers the toe, the tans come there. Press. There's an opening. Shift back, pressing down. And shift forward, pressing forward. Again, you don't want to move forward and move the hands. You don't want to move the hands and move forward. Everything moves together. Single whip. There's a transition where you come back, relaxing, into your center. Then turn, keeping all the weight on the left foot. Turn in the toe. Three is starting to transition. So the first point is right there. The left hand comes up inside the right as the heel touches down. Don't let these hands get behind your body. Keep them in front of your body. One, coming back. Turn. Sink into the left claw. Shift to the right claw. Open. And finally, open. You don't want to come forward and then have the hand. You don't want to open and then come forward. This is splitting energy. It's all happening at the same time by the time you get there. Raise hands. One, come back into the right claw. Relax. Two, shift to the left claw. See? Now, and this is Robin. This is like, just like we were just doing in your Robins. And finally, close. The close is my body. See, at this point, my body is facing slightly to the left of, say, this is straight here, slightly to the left. As the torso turns, the hand joins, and the foot touches down all at the same instant. Now I'm facing a little bit to the right of straight. Raise hands. So it's a little tricky. One. Two, so I'm a little to the left. Now, as I continue to the right, everything comes and forms its own place. Right. OK, so um, what I'm going to do is invite in Rose Soini to come in and help me demonstrate, if she would, demonstrate um, the next couple of the applications for the next couple of movements. And then we'll work on them. So these next couple of movements, let me demonstrate while Rose is uh, coming on over. First, now watch. Stork spreads its wings. Come into the center. Replace the right foot. Shift to the right. Now here, you see him gathering the weight into the right claw, and then it's turn. Stork spreads its wings. Left brush knee. Turn to the right, step to the left, and brush. OK, does that look like fun? Hope so. OK, Rose, if you come in, please. Hey, Rose. Rose. Um, OK, maybe if you come over here. So um, let's look at, uh, so. The first one, stork spreads its wings. Actually, this, these two movements go together, work together. 
the, the, this particular storage spread just wings and left brush knee. Some don't work together, but these two do, as, uh, as you'll see. First, Rose is uh, punching inward with her left side to my center. Now, because I'm way, 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 way stronger than her, I could, when she punches in, you see, I could stop it. Right? Or if, it, if I was in karate, we could break it. I like her too much. So as it's coming in, what I want to do is avoid it. Now, I could run away from it, but then she's just probably going to follow me. I, then I don't have any re recourse. So here, which, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to step in behind her if possible. Then I can deal with her. Now, as I go to step in, you see, if I don't do anything, she's going she's gonna to do all these terrible things to me. So, knowing Rose, you really have to keep your eye on her. So, as I go by, I, I do what's called attach. I attach to her. So, and lead. I want her to go and be kind of uncomfortable. Okay? So, I lead her out. I think we're, you're, maybe you need to be a little more in the light. Look at, there you go. Okay, so. Now, at the same time that I do this, I get behind her, this hand just swings up. It's basically like if she's pushing my, just as she's pushed my shoulder, you see, if I'm relaxed, this hand is just going to come up. So, you see. So this is basically store spreads its wings. It could, I, it could come from a punch or it could come from a push. If she's there and I push, I just take. Now, if you notice, when I step around, my, this foot, my left foot is free, so I can kick her, trip her, kick her down, knee her, hit her in the, knee in the face, all those sorts of things. So. This is stork spreads its wings. This hand, you can see, can chop up here. It can be attacking the back, and uh, it can do a lot of different things. Okay, so the stork spreads its wings. Now, as she's going this way, she's not going to feel very comfortable. Because she's flexible, she could maybe roll out of it and run down. But most people, what they're going to do is try to escape. As she goes to escape, I'm just going to follow her up with this hand. Either I can bonk her or throw her off balance a little bit, like this. And as she starts to come off balance here, she's going to try to get straight again. And as she tries to get straight, this hand then pushes her out of the way. Okay. So um, that's it, about it. All right, she's punching in. We step around, hit up, and hit again. And that's basically this kind of simple thing about it. Okay, I guess that's about it for now. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Rose. You've been very cooperative. Okay. I usually don't like to mess around with her. She's tough, I'll tell you. She gives it back. Okay, so now, now watch again. The punch is coming in. As I go to step around, this hand just relaxes. A, it's going to protect the lower body, and it's going to gain momentum to come up and around if, if it needs to, which it's going to. So one, we're going to replace to step to the side and around her. The left hand is going to lead down. The right hand is going to just come with the body. And we're going to end up touching down the toe, facing a new direction. Now, in the, in the form as we've been doing it at home, you at home, we would end up in this direction for raised hands. So stork spreads its wings, we replace, lead, and up. Now this little, if, if we look at the foot movement here, when we replace, when we replace a foot, 
here I am. Sometimes the tendency is just to, to kind of want to do that. But if I do that, I can't do anything with this leg. I can't use this leg for anything. And I'm just kind of stuck, and it, it, it's, it's hard for balance. So what we do when we replace is we pull in the toe first. Come into Dingbo on toe first, then step down. See here, I can now kick if I want as I'm coming around. This is very good exercise for, for working the hip joints in a different way. We've done movements uh, like, like a single whip to open them or raise hand, a right push upward to open the hips. And now what we're going to do is close the hip. Okay? We're going to close the hip joints. So the first piece is, as you go, you pull into dingbo and toe, replace down. When you replace, you do not take the weight off of the left foot. It's very easy to just step right into that. You do not. You want to keep your weight, as always, until you get your root. Then we're going to shift into the right qua. My body is still facing this direction. Finally, the torso and energy is going to twist. This is like this is like a discus thrower here. You see? If you've ever watched the discus player, they gather here, you right, and then you, it's from the here. It, it starts in the legs, goes to the hips, to the torso, and finally to the arms. You see? So now, because this is Taiji, I don't want to, you see, a discus player then just kind of goes off and, and kind of moves a little bit. Because in Tai Chi, we don't want to lose our root. We don't want to go anywhere here. When my energy is going this way up and to the left, I then replace this left foot to the right. You, can you see how that, that brings balance to this movement? You see, and this is very good if you were really wanting to throw somebody or, or sweep them, throw them down. As you're pushing this way, this would then sweep them in the other direction. So in this case, we replace the toe. So all of those points are very important. Okay, so let's, let's do it. Let's do the foot movement once again. One, pull in. Two, Keep the weight on the left foot. Replace the right without shifting the weight. You can make sure you can do it by bobbing up and down. Don't lean out of your, you want to keep into this right left qua, left qua. Then shifting over here, it's almost a straight shift over before you release. You don't want to release the, the waist yet. You gather the, into the right qua, then Release forward, turn, and at the end, replace the ding bon toe. Now, don't reach too far. Just keep a relaxed ding bon toe. One, pull in. Two, step down at a 45 degree angle. Now, we're facing halfway to our new direction. Shift to the right, turn the torso, and replace to the left. Okay, now watch the hands with this. As you replace, the right hand drops down. Pull in, replace, the right hand drops down. This is like center position. Then, as you shift, you start to pull slightly, so this is leading, you're not really pulling, but you're, you're, you're leading with the left hand, right hand is still down. As you torso untorques, the right hand comes up, the left hand is down. This, um, now, this hand movement, I think this is the first time, we, this is the first time we've had this hand movement here. Now, we're going to see it a lot, a lot, a lot. The arm is not straight, but it's down as far as it can be without being locked. It has flex, so it can pop back up. 
If it was straight, then my whole body maybe would get thrown off. It has flex. The wrist is relatively relaxed. It doesn't want to be tight. It wants to be relatively relaxed. It's in front of the thigh. You don't want it back here someplace. In front of the thigh to the side of the body. The right hand is going to end up almost like you're saluting slightly out. Remember, I chopped her basically in the neck. So it's about the neck height, and she would be right in front of me at this point. The finger is held fairly close in here without being stiff, without being too stiff, because I'm going to chop with the side of this structure. And if my thumb were to stick out, well then, you know, my thumb would be the thing that would hit it, and it would be, you know, I could hurt myself. This way, it's a more solid structure. Okay, it's like a knife edge. And your shoulders are down. The body is relaxed. This is going to be the ending position for stork spreads its wings. Okay. Now, I said, what I said about the robins is this movement comes from... Now, it's almost like walking. This movement is very similar to walking, only... I st the weight stays on the right foot. And we emphasize a little more, a little more gather, release. Now, if I just did it with one side, it's not nearly, doesn't have nearly the effect of two. Plus it looks, doesn't it look better than, doesn't this look better than this? No, no balance. Okay, let's look again. One, pull in, replace, the right hand drops down, straight down. You don't want it behind you, it's in front of you to guard and protect. Two, you start to pull slightly down with the left as you shift onto the right foot. And three, turn your torso, replace the toe facing straight. Don't lean back, nice and straight. Stork spreads its wings. One, replace. Two, shift. Three, release. One, replace. Two, shift. Three, release. One, replace. Two, Shift, three, release. Replace, shift, release. And of course, because it's Tai Chi, it will flow. Because it's Tai Chi, it will flow. It's not one, two, three, it's one, but for the sake of learning, we generally break it up, but when we think about a dynamic movement, it's all one thing. Okay, left brush knee, we follow with a up, up, chop. As one hand comes up, again, it's, it's like the same thing as walking. Generally, as one hand goes forward, one hand goes back. So for left brush knee, as one hand comes up, the other hand goes down. Now, there's so much involved with this brushing, what we call brush the knee. Brush the knee. Now, let's go left brush knee, chop, 
Now watch. This is what we call brushing the knee. The hand comes down and then it returns back home again to this place. Brushing the knee has a lot. This can be a block. It can be a press something down. It can just be a, a, a kind of a, a diversion of something coming out. In this case, what's going to happen is we're going to chop, and it's just going to relax, and this hand is then going to come out. Now, we're going to have a lot of brush and ease coming up in this next little bit. And so there's a few things we need to look at. First off, on pushing or striking with this back hand. Now, the hand comes into place, generally speaking, in most martial arts, you want to have the hands in the front of the body because they can do, they can block, they can punch, they can do things if they're in the front. In the back, you know, it, it, it takes too long, and I don't know why they'd be back here unless, you know, they're tied back here or something. But other than that, I'd want to keep my hands in the front. So in this movement, you'll sometimes see, you'll sometimes see people in um, other forms, do it like this. Hmm? Now, I'm not exactly sure what they're, why they're doing this. Now, it could be just, for exercise, this could be very nice to open up the shoulder and open up the back. Yeah. But because I have this thought of, that we're doing Tai Chi Chuan, we're doing Tai Chi Chuan, which means the martial aspects of Tai Chi, um, I want everything to fit into that model. I want everything to be s simple, direct, straightforward. If we want to exercise the shoulder well, we can do it, do, do other things, you know, other exercises, qigong or, or things like that to open that up. But in Tai Chi, I want to have my tools in front of me. So now, when we push out or punch out, the, ob the part that we're going to use is the heel of the forearm. This solid piece right here. We're not going to use the fingers and not really very much at all on the palms. Sometimes we slap and we use the palm for slapping. But generally if you were to hit something or really push something, it happens with these bones. You see the heel of this the palm happens to be the end of these bones. And this bone is connected to this bone's connected here. So the leverage is very good. I have a lot of strength here. So I want to make sure that that's the piece that either hits or pushes. So you'll see here, we have a very special thing that we do called dropping the wrist. Here I am ready. Now, what I'm going to do is I want to expose that part of my palm. So as I move forward, the wrist drops, exposing that piece, and the energy comes out there. You see? You see? The palm is staying pretty much the same place, but the wrist is dropping, which opens this up. Okay? Okay? So that you're going to see a lot. Another thing that you're going to see in this movement is that in Tai Chi, we like to hide things. Okay, for instance, for facing you. When I do this movement, you see, this front hand is sort of hiding this back hand. It's a little bit hard to see it. And then it moves out of the way and out comes this other hand. It's very important in, in our timing of our movements that this open and this comes right out right after. It wouldn't do me very much good if I'm hiding something to expose it and then wait for a while and then have it come out. This is a surprise to the opponent. So here it's back. 
So as soon as that disappears, that comes out. So in timing this movement, You want to set this up, then out it comes. Now another thing about brushing the knee is you're going to notice that this wrist is going to set also. This setting wrist is like a pull. In order to gain more strength, if I were punching something or really pushing it and I wanted to really gain strength, I'd want to pull on one side of it as I punched on the other. And this setting of the wrist signifies pulling in a gentle way. So I'd, I'm not going to use muscles to, in my Tai Chi practice. If I were applying it, yes, I would use strength at the appropriate moment. But right at the, for our exercise here is what we call setting this wrist. So at the end, you'll notice at the end, the two wrists set at the same time. It's not one, two. It's one, one. That way it's all very balanced. It all comes from the center. Every movement comes from the center and this is no exception. Now watch as we put it all together. The left hand comes up, the right hand just relaxes down. One. There's a turn. The torso starts to turn. This is from the hip, a little hip flick which brings this hand up. And again, this is a chopping hand, because we remember we were chopping. So again, it uses the same chopping structure that we did with this hand. One. The other hand is held loosely to the side. Then, we want to set up our situation. We turn to the right, sink the weight into the right qua, step slightly to the left with the left foot. So now the energy is in this right leg and qua. Finally, as I shift, it comes up to the waist, and then the energy gets released as the two wrists set. We end up facing slightly to the left of straight to that new wall. Okay. So let's, well, let's see this in the direction it's going to go. Stork spreads its wings. One is step and join. Two is start to lead and sink. Three is chop, replace. Left brush knee, relax, relax. Turn, chop. Turn, get ready. Shift, release. Now, don't lean forward. Don't straighten the arm fully out. Keep the elbow, always keep the elbow a little relaxed. This, not straight, a little relaxed. Don't lean back. Keep your body forward. Now, remember that in every movement has a counterbalance. And there's internal counterbalances and external counterbalances. And um, the, intern the external counterbalances are things like this foot moving to the left as these arms are moving, this moving to the right as these arms are moving to the left. That's what I call an external or the structure is moving to counterbalance. We also have internal counterbalance, which is as my energy is lifting, if for instance, okay, so I say the easiest one to see is like a punch, is in punching. If I just punched with this side, well, I could be thrown easily out of my center and fall over. So generally what you'll see with most punches is inside there's, as this hip is going forward, as this side of my body is going forward, this other side of my body is going back. If something is going up, if there's an energy going up inside, there's also an energy going down so that I don't just float off. So we have this counterbalance going on. So 
in this particular movement, in, in brushing the knees, in brushing the knees, there's this energy coming outward. It's kind of, you see, it's coming out. So there's something right about in the lower mid-back that's going back. It's going back at the same time this is going forward. So there's a, you want to feel an expansion in all directions when you expand out. Now, it might not seem to make sense at this moment, but it really does inside. For instance, when we push something down, in the beginning we do commencement. For when you push something down, there's an energy that moves up to the top of the head. Right? When you push something up, there's an energy that moves down the spine into the feet. And we have all of that going on on a physical and internal energy um, basis. And at some point, we'll, we, we'll break up all these movements and really look at that more closely. But for now, just take it in. OK, so here we go. One, replace to a 45 halfway straight over. She has a slight arcing, just a slight arcing, but don't, don't come up and then down. As you come over, you shift. Now you're loading up the right claw and releasing. And at the end of the movement, replace the toe. There's a little transition, slight turn to the to the left as things start to relax. Then chop up one, turn. See, here's another thing. See, this, this form is designed so beautifully. It's just the people who made this up were geniuses. It's so, it's so wonderful. When we do this, this movement, when we're moving things over here, it's timed so that as things move over here, the foot moves over here, you see? If I just did this, it would be easy to lose my balance and go out of the picture. So here, as this goes over, you see, this comes up. And you'll see, like in Chen style, they do this sort of thing, another style of Tai Chi. A lot. For that balance, here, as the torso turns to the right, the foot touches down. Then we are ready to come out. Hmm. Stork spreads its wings. One. Left brush knee, relax, turn, chop, relax, gather to the right qua, release, set the wrist, counterbalancing in sort of the middle lower back. The hand comes, the pushing hand comes to the center of the body. It never would cross over. The, the arm does not cross over. It comes to, it it's, stays on its own side, but to the center. And it's not way out here someplace. Because I'm pushing somebody who's standing right in front of me, pushing them in the center of the chest, probably, it goes to my center. If it crossed over, I would be liable to be closed up and blocked. You see? So w this way, this hand takes care of this side of the body. This hand takes care of this side of the body. Even when you, th it looks like this crossing the body, doesn't it? Like this. But it isn't. It isn't. Because, am I facing this camera? Let me see. Now see, because my torso is turning, you see, if I did this facing this way, you see, it hasn't crossed, but because of your angle of viewing it, it looks like I'm crossing myself. But in actuality, it's only coming to the center line. But my torso's turning. 
So those kinds of things you want to pay attention to and watch. Okay, so let's see. Replace, shift, release, relax, chop full, relax, set up, release. Once again. Stork spreads its wings. Left brush knee. Very good. That's fun, huh? Those are nice movements. And uh, it, I, there's a, a nice flow to those two. As I said before, some movements are by themselves. It's like, you know, ward off left. There's, there's one person over there. Right push upward. Now I'm dealing with something else. Some go together. Roll back, press forward, and push. It's all the same person. I'm dealing with three different things. Then a different person, single whip, whole different person. Then raise hands, hold different person. But now, this is the same person. One, two, three. All the same. And some, some of these uh, go back and forth like that. So that's a lot of, uh, that's interesting and fun. Okay, so I think what I'll do, let's put this all together, put it in with the, with the beginning parts. Uh, and um, let me show you, you know, I'll go through it from the front first so you can see how it all flows together. And then we, we'll do it all together. I'll do it from the back and we can do it all together. Okay? So from the beginning. First the arms, the back rounds a bit. Commencement. Ward off left, open, lead. So here again, see I'm taking the energy to the right, but then the left foot steps out and open. Right push upward. As this hand comes, the right hand's coming over, left hand, left, left, you know, anyway. <laughs> Press. Push. Single whip. Raise hands. Stork spreads its wings. Left brush knee. Okay, sometimes we have to accept our limitations with a smile. Okay, let's, let's go from the back, shall we? <clears throat> So do follow along at home. Inhale, always start with an inhale. Then just don't worry too much about your breath. Let it just be relaxing. Shift left, open right. Ward off left, shift right. Step straight ahead, then open. Pong upward. Sink. Step right. Pong upward. Right, push upward. Transition. Relax. Roll back. Lead. Gather into the left quad. Release. Press. Relax. Come back. Press down. 
and forward, push. Single whip, come straight back first, now turn. Shift. Open. Step. And open. Raise hands. Shift. Relax. Turn in. Shift. And raise hands. Stork spreads its wings. Relax. Replace. Lead and chop upward. Relax. Chop. Relax. Shift. Firm. So it's very important that we recognize substantial and insubstantial or relaxation and creation, or uh, you know, soft and hard, that kind of thing. So as you go through the movements, there's a phase that uh, you go through, always relax and then create. Okay, so thank you all very much for joining us, and um, I look forward to continuing on with you in our little journey. So I'll just go out by doing the form from the beginning, and thank you all so much. <laughs>